Standard status. I've got that lightning inside me, son of a god. I'm like a titan that's rising, no, oh, just you watch. I'm stepping in the fade. There is no time to waste. I've got that lightning inside me. This is how legends are made. gentlemen hello and welcome to another world of warships live stream i'm mr conway and it is a sincere pleasure to see so many of you waiting in the wings to join us for our extra special episode um q and a stream designed uh, and, and and kind of to answer all the questions you have after watching our latest waterline video which i hope you enjoyed um yes i have i have been for a haircut hairdressers are allowed to open in this country you can all go over it yes it's it's all gone over it there uh, was quite a lot of sweeping involved afterwards and i'm very glad it's gone i feel like 10 pounds lighter don't look at it unfortunately but we'll get there um with me today is my very special um not quite a twin twin uh, mr chrysatos hello hello everybody yeah i have to say that um i enjoyed answering a lot of comments on uh, yesterday's waterline episode where i think like around uh, 20 comments were about mr conway's hair so i guess i will have to really introduce that separately in the next video <laughs> yes but you did that on purpose not because that was actually a sensible thing to do right okay um but because uh, the two of us while we do know some things we are not quite in the heart of development so with us today um, is a special guest from st petersburg uh you've know him uh, and seen him before i think uh hello hello shonai hello mr conway hello chrysanthus i believe i'm here today as a representative of uh, longer haircut style so <laughs> all those jokes won't go away that easy it's fine like you look you look fantastic uh, at least compared to me last week um, yeah, so I, I hope you've all watched our waterline video. We were considering playing it briefly for you before the stream so you could see it, but then the inevitable um, tech issue uh, that, that always seems to crop up, uh, it's a different one each time, cropped up, so we had to, you know, like obviously turn off the computer and turn it back on again, again to fix it. Um, so I hope you all know what, what we announced. But uh, Sean, why don't you give us like a, a, like a 20 second TLDR of the topics that we're going to talk about today? Okay, so uh, Commander Skills uh, rework in the, uh, small changes in 0 10 4 with removal of Deadeye. Submarines, uh, first step is a se separate test. Uh, a lot of changes, a lot of improvements. After that, uh, submarines will be tested further, uh, starting with, sep uh, with ranked battles. And I believe we will talk a lot about why this was a decision. Um, Super battleships, a temporary event with uh, two giant, huge steel machines. Um, some minor changes, some changes to interaction between rocket planes and surface trips in form of um, uh, guns firing. Um, what else? Airstrike, air strike, da and Dutch cruisers, um, and a new, ship, a new dockyard ship. I believe that's probably the shortest overview we can have. Plus with aircraft carriers. Clearly. Yes. We all know that that you want them, uh, but uh, you know we'll get there eventually. Excellent. So, um, chat, while um, while you're all here, why don't you tell us, like, why don't we just start, right, with some questions. Um, so first of all, because I can see the first question right there from TNT line, will submarines come this year? 
Please, please try and frame your questions that we can answer them without giving you a specific time frame for anything um, or, or having to make too many promises. Because when when something is implemented, you know, it's, 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 it, it happens when it happens and it's ready when it's ready. Um, but you should be able to play submarines this year, yes. In Not some form, at least. The end of the year, yes. In some form of the way. I think we said in summer. Yes, yes. Uh like the separate test in summer, uh, we expect it to happen in summer. Okay. Um, so, guys, um, let's. Well, let's. Why don't we just pick a topic? Why don't we talk about um, super battleships first, guys? Why don't we? Why don't you ask us if you have any any question about super battleships? Uh, we have. I don't know if you've seen this yet, but uh, we have a little little preview teaser um, of what these super battleships actually look like. So, have a have a quick look. Uh, so you can see on the right-hand side, we have the uh, new Hanover. Uh, in the middle, we have the Japanese Satsuma. And then next to it, we have uh, Yamato for scale. Uh, so these are rather large ships. And of course, I see the first question here being uh, from DJ for uh, stands for super battle ships. So what we can already talk about is, for example, main caliber, some, some other aspects. But the full stats will, of course, be released closer to this actual mode when it's going to go out when we have more data for you to actually take a look at so um in terms of like detail stats you will have to wait a bit but of course that information will be shared on the development blog as usual yes um there's a question here from shatrical um is there a chance that the super battleships will be part of the main game um <laughs> right now we are adding them just as a part of uh temporary game mode so um it's 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 sort of a representation of our vision of how these uh, how the rebuilding school would uh, evolve, and uh, about what will happen after the event. <laughs> this will be decided after the event itself, of course. But we will share all the ideas, all our thoughts and news with you. Yeah. So so look, we'll, we'll see, right? Let's play around with them first, and then afterwards we can have a conversation about it and and make decisions. But right now. Um, we mostly want to give you like an extra big toy with extra big guns and a new cool mechanic to play with. I'm um, also very happy that I can finally show this uh, to to chat like at Albert Schneider, who has been, I think, bugging us for the last two years yes. about uh, H42 and similar battleships, where we can bring them to the game. And now, at least, you know, in this event, you will be able to get your hands on it. Yes. Um, how many super battleships might be in each match? Ask Zmes. Do you have like a like a rough working idea of what the mode is going to look like yet? Uh, yes, we think uh, that uh, the amount of super battleships would be no more than like two, three ships per side, something like that. Okay, so you know, like like okay, that that makes make, makes sense. Yeah, even even Dobschke is asking: Will super battleships be their own class in game or under the standard battleship class? Uh, right now, we think that it, should, it is a part of standard battleship class. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, somebody's asking here, like, how am I supposed uh, to to kind of fight these battleships in my cruiser, angling with that caliber? Nope. And uh, how do you fight the Yamato right now? She also uh, overmatched the uh, cruiser armor right now. Yeah, so overmatch, this overmatch. Is, like. Uh, this is more about team fighting. So use your uh, like cope with your own super battleship to fight it, or with uh, if your other teammates to fight. So like our game is designed in a way that uh, uh, not each and every ship can defeat every other ship like one on one in like one hundred percent cases. Or some ships um, have better capabilities in fighting certain specific classes, and they're weaker against other classes. And like. Uh, uh, Probably it's uh, in cases when your ship is not designed to be the best to take all the specific enemy, like there are outs like uh, working with a team and uh, and stuff. Yeah, uh, there's a question here on YouTube from SK Ramon say asking, are those free super battleships? So the super battleships are not going to be yours to keep, uh, but they are going to be free. The way the mechanic um, is going to work is that you'll have to play tier nine and ten ships. 
in the mode against Super Battleships, and you'll be able to earn a new temporary resource, and then you can unlock the ability to play one game in a Super Battleship by spending that resource. You know, it ensures that we don't have a situation where everybody goes like, oh, I want to play the biggest ship, and nobody wants to, like, uh, fight against the biggest ship. So it kind of kind of have to play with and against them um, to be able to, to unlock them to play. Um, so yes, they, they will be free. Yeah. Um, I also see a question from Danny Bundy who says, uh, will super battleships have more armor and HP than normal battleships or quite similar, just more powerful in terms of their armament? Um, I, be, uh, I don't know the exact stats at the moment, but uh, I believe you can expect them to be more tanky and have more firepower, like uh, the overall evolution of the certain so, for example, if you compare Satsuma size to Yamato size, you certainly can expect it to have much more uh, displacement and uh, as such, I believe she will have uh, somewhat more HP. Uh, of course, displacement is not the actual one-to-one -one, uh, calculation of hit points, but usually, usually bigger ship, bigger hit points. Not always the case, but the, like, the uh, rule of thumb. Yeah. There and was a also... Uh, go ahead. Sorry. And also, besides the actual like technical parameters like guns number, guns caliber, hit points, etc., they also have a new mechanic. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about the mechanic now? Because I had a question actually from TPAC Top, who's asking, or he's saying, an adjustment to fire progress bar will be gradually filled by each salvo. And he says, this not, does not seem worthy as a feature. Why not have this for accuracy instead? Uh, the, like, the actual bar, uh, um, besides the actual salvo you should make, the salvo should land uh, either hit a target or land very close to it. So, like, <laughs> you won't be able to shoot, I shoot an island in, the, uh, in uh, the other half of the map and then use uh, the advantage you, you've got through, uh, the, uh, through the mechanic. You need to fire at a target. Yeah. Um, so, and, so, yeah, um, so, yeah, so yeah. I was just going to say, uh, tea backed up, so this is already how it works, right? You have to accurately yeah. shoot to be able to fill, fill the bar up. Yes, and uh, also regarding the possible power-ups, uh, this is something that uh, also was discussed, if I remember correctly, like uh, um, uh, people said that it should give, for example, some kind of accuracy buff or something else. The exact buff, which can be, uh, which will be uh, given to a specific ship, is not yet decided, and it is a part of um, settings for this ship, so it may be different for these two scripts, for example. Okay, great. Um, Drialga on YouTube is asking whether the super battleships will have their own commanders or whether you can assign your existing commanders to them. Uh, is, is that something we already know? Uh, regrettably, I don't know the exact answer to these at the moment. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you, of course, with more information about this uh, yes. sooner to the release. You have to keep in mind that, you know, when we, when we release these Waterline episodes, what we're trying to achieve is give you transparency and some kind of idea of what we're working on for the next few months so that you can, you know, can already see what we're working on. You can give us very early feedback about this. And I'm very happy that a lot of you did. I had a lot of work yesterday to go through all of the comments. And uh, thank you very much for already giving, giving us some feedback. And I see here also from Double Bogus, uh, who posted on Twitch, he says he's very happy that we're trying new sized ships, submarines, and air bombing mechanics. He really appreciates us trying new ideas, testing, updating, and also then, you know, modifying this or removing it if it doesn't work. So uh, very happy to, you know, always always try to make this game more interesting, more fun to you uh, with new stuff, but also balancing old stuff. And while I see, like, here a lot of questions also about submarines, and guys, let's do it this way. We have, like, two hours for questions. So let's go through the different topics one yeah. at a time, and then, for example, all of the submarine questions and so on, we will answer during the submarine part so that we can, you know, have at least some kind of a uh, little bit of order <laughs> in, yeah, in, I, this, in this Q&A. I, I think that makes sense. There was a question here from Machel um, um, 91. What's special uh, about the Hannover 127 millimeters? Where did you get the reference? So first of all, uh, there was a small error in our video, um, not because we made a mistake, because we were given incorrect information. Um, they are actually 128. Um, but the, the point of them is that they are dual purpose guns, right? So they can fu function as secondaries, but they also give you AA firepower, which is cool. Like, um, if, if we talk about the actual reference, uh, regrettably at the moment I don't have them at hand, but um, overall we follow the development, we follow the evolution which um, 
surface ships had in World War II, we can imagine that uh, dual-purpose guns is a way to go with the increased um, efficiency of uh, planes and with uh, the limited amount of uh, displacement and uh, actual space on the, on the ship to use. So double-purpose guns is a way to go in such case. So and it seems kind of logical to have them on board of the ship. Yeah. Um, another question here. Um, will there be CVs in the uh, special game mode? Um, most probably, yes. Um, most probably the tier 10 CVs. Okay. And Captain Minion would like to know, how realistic are the models of these ships compared to their historical design um, or designs or concepts? <laughs> That's an interesting question, which can only be answered if you have a model and uh, and the drawing side by side and comparing all the details and all the elements. Uh, I can't answer that like immediately. We we strive for making our models quite accurate. Sometimes, yes, of course, we have to um, do changes to the models based on primarily the gameplay needs. Um, so, uh, yes, such cases may happen, and I know there are a lot of people who are very passionate about history, about the uh, the 100% correct representations, and so here I have to say sorry, because, yes, we sometimes uh, we are the game, we are not the, like, um, 3D model theater or something like that, and uh, we have to cater to primarily the gameplay when we are creating the ships, and sometimes, uh, regrettably, we have to step away from 100% histori uh, historical accuracy in terms of models. Yeah. Um, there's another question here about, do you, can we talk about the armor profile of Hannover? Um, if you want to get in detail for stats and the models of these ships, um, hold off a little bit of time. Uh, we will, of course, be testing these ships. And uh, somebody was asking earlier if they're going to be available on public test. And before they go, they go to release, uh, they you know like will of course have to also test this mode on public test. So you'll be have your have an opportunity to have a look at them um, um, soon uh, once once they they I think like hit the client. Yeah. Anthony Lieskart is asking: Is the big German BB a super closer cool first? Kind of yes. It's a, you know that's that's exactly the idea behind this um, approach for the event is that we basically extrapolate like from if if CVs wouldn't have been like the super dominating force um, at the end of World War II, you know if if navies would have still continued building battleships after the Yamato and Bismarck, for example, what would have happened? What kind of designs you would have been able to see? And that's kind of the idea behind it. So also for the question that I've seen on on YouTube about whether the like, kind of like armor profile is going to be similar to the cool first like with having like a turtle back i mean the concept is still going to be roughly the same it's kind of just like extrapolating um and based on on, on the designs that we have available from uh, archives to kind of build that yes um so I see a couple more questions about that, whether or not CVs will be in this game mode. We answered this already. Most likely CVs will be present um, and uh, will be tier 10 CVs. Yeah. Uh, Kailash Sunga on YouTube is asking, do they have SAP shells? So SAP is currently um, pretty much exclusive to um, Italian ships, Italian battleships in particular. When we talk about battleships, they have only been added to Italian battleships, and I would not expect this to change for these super battleships. They will probably just have a regular AP and regular HE as their, you know, tech tree lines have on as well. So I wouldn't I wouldn't expect like, something crazy there. <laughs> when you call the 510 millimeter guns uh, regular AP. A regular AP, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, KV2 Master says, wait, isn't Yamato technically a super battleship? Um, I would almost classify it as one, yes. Um, but we also have uh, you know, like other battleships on that tier, so we, we go one above that. And as silly as it sounds, uh, with hindsight, they were actually like legitimately planned. And uh, the, you know, like the German H42 and H44 uh, designs were completely ludicrous. Um, and there was the what the A150 design on the Japanese side, uh, the, the Super Yamato. So they were they were originally like planning on going even bigger until they realized, you know, like it's better to build more carriers. Uh, Captain Kreutz is asking, will we see the Große Kur first equipped with the 483 millimeter guns of Hannover? Should I? I, I, I guess no. Uh, I believe that right now the Große Kur first has its own niche on tier 10, and. Uh, Yes, of course, we can see such a ship like uh, getting side graded, but I'm not sure that um, 
it will be one to one replacement of 12 guns uh, of smaller caliber with eight guns of much higher caliber without any other adjustments to the hull and other parameters. So it won't be grosser cursus as is. So uh, though uh, though the hull may be used as a replacement, but I, I'm not sure that it will happen in the closed future. Uh, there's also a question from Valhalla Life, uh, who's asking, why doesn't a German battleship just come onto your turn as a special ship, um, and not as an extra mode? The Germans don't have a tier 10 cruiser or BB or DD as a special ship right now. That is true. Um, but that will happen separately from the super battleships. Like, this is not something to say, like, hey, we're going to have a German super battleship in a special mode, and this is the reason why we don't need to have special German ships on tier 10. You can be, uh, I can assure you that uh, sooner or later, there might be popping up something like this. What it's going to be, what it's, you know, what it's going to be, I cannot tell you, but I think it's safe to say that there's a good chance for this happening. And uh, of course, Captain Minya has to ask whether we can now expect a super carrier. And uh, we've already shown you on April. April, uh, almost April the 1st, a little bit earlier, we had the Hapakook video, right? So um, you can await this naval legend in the game. Yes, Just trolling, of course. Um, <laughs> I, I still hope we can, you know, some someday maybe find a way to put this model into the game and have some fun with it, maybe in a special mode or something else. But um, for now, it's super battleships, and then we'll have to see how this mode goes and so on. If we if we see that this is popular, then we can maybe try to, you know, uh, do a bit more with it. But for now, this is uh, the, the concept, and then we'll see what, what yeah. we'll do with it. Um, to quickly address something, I see a question, for instance, or a comment from Dixon Quark, who says, Just a waste of time. My questions will never be answered or took seriously so this goes for all of you watching on youtube or on twitch we are just people and there's a lot of you and a few of us and there's a lot of chat right we cannot answer all of the questions that come in as they come in if you have a question that you think is worth asking please don't complain about us not answering it instead ask it again it's not that we don't want to answer your questions it's that you know like we ca cannot physically answer all of them um it helps also uh, both on YouTube and on Twitch to tag us with, with at World of Warships because it gets highlighted for us. It makes it easier to see and the odds are you're probably going to get um, get your questions answered uh, more frequently. Yeah. Uh, Julian Heavy has a question here. Um, I think we already answered it before, but I think it's uh, always an interesting question, right? He's asking about the Japanese super battleships like the Yamato class. Will they ever get the Type 94, the AA uh, main battery shells basically? Um, it looks like fireworks and is uh, supposed to shoot down planes. And I don't think this will change with the super battleship uh, that we're going to be introducing. Um, this is not planned right now. We, we simply don't use this for like, uh, at least for now, it's not planned. Unless, Shona, you want to correct me and this is, uh, this is snuck into the, the roadmap <laughs> and suddenly we'll, we'll actually have it. I won't correct you. Okay, Either. okay. <laughs> yes. So, um, Julian, at least for now, uh, for, at least for now, it's a no. But uh, who knows about the future, right? But at least it's not going to be happening anytime soon. And uh, guys, I see that you have a lot of questions about uh, submarines and so on. We'll get to this topic soon. We'll just want to kind of want to wrap up most of the questions um, that we see about this topic um, with the super battleships. So if you have any questions about this topic, please ask them right now. And then I think we can actually uh, move on to the next topic, uh, which will probably be, let's <laughs> let's go for the big beast, the submarines, um, as the next yes. topic, because I know there will be many, many, many questions. Ah, already um, is asking here, uh, consumables. Are, are these super battleships going to have any additional consumables or any additional module slots, Shona? Uh I can't promise anything about the consumable so, uh, module or, or slot for upgrades. Uh, what, I, what I can say is that probably it will, uh, probably, for example, the Hanover will have hydroacoustic storage, but uh, like, don't take my words for granted here because uh, they are still being set up. So their initial parameters are yet to be defined, and after that, some, uh, some time will have to pass. So um, they uh, and they will be tested on public test, of course, as a part of an event. So uh, probably, yes, probably Hanover, for example, could have a signature consumable of German battleships, but uh, we will see. Yeah, uh, Bacon Blast asking whether the super battleships are going to be super slow. Uh, why should they? Because they're big. So, uh, probably the engines <laughs> might probably scale with the hull, so we'll have to see, but I wouldn't expect... I, as as far as I'm aware, and chat will quickly correct me, because um, I'm sure I'm wrong, but as far as I'm aware, 
the it's main... a good start of a sentence. <laughs> Correct me if I'm main... wrong because I'm sure I'm wrong, but <laughs> listen what I have to say. The main limiting <laughs> factors for speed in, in water, I think, are the length compared to the width, right? So if you make the ship longer, the it will theoretically be able to go faster. I'm not... Chat, um, chat, correct me, please. This is why the Ochotnik is so, also the fastest DD in the game. Very, very long and thin, fast. <laughs> no, long, long, long Short. and thin, long and thin, I think, helps with the speed. Short um, and fat, slow. So, and then um, there was a question from Albert Schneider about when will you be able to see all of their parameters? So for now, we talked about this waterline, gave you a little bit of a preview, and then I think closer, like I can't give you a specific date yet, but um, we'll share this as soon as possible when we're ready to actually share all of the stats and so on on the development log as, as usual. Shonai. Shonai will be responsible for it. Yes. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just point the finger like Shonai, it's, it's you. I, can I just look one more time quickly before we head over to other topics? Let me just recap, right? Because I think many people came new. And if you haven't watched the Waterline video yet, I encourage you to go watch it now and then come back and ask the questions because otherwise you really, you're lacking some context here. Um, but super battleships are going to be, and they're not going to be um, like, like facing, somebody was asking, will I face tier eight ships in super battle, battleships? Super battleships are going to come in a limited time special game mode, right? You won't be able to always play them. You'll have to play a tier nine and 10 ships or so tier eight ships are not going to be part of this mode. Uh, with those ships, you can unlock a new resource. Uh, it will be called intelligence and you can spend intelligence to unlock uh, basically like a one game rental of the super battleship take a super battleship wreck face and then you can go back to that tier 9 10 ships and play and you know like accumulate intelligence again so you can play the big one um that's how it's going to work right so for now um there are no plans um after that we're going to do the special mode we're going to see how you enjoy to see how everything works and then we're going to make a decision on what's going to happen uh, with super battleships afterwards I need. I need. To, <laughs> sorry, just uh, somebody asking whether he needs to buy intelligence. No, you have to earn it. <laughs> you have to be born with it in some cases. I also, I also have to say that there was a a fantastic comment on the YouTube video about the resource name intelligence, and I'm sure we're going to have plenty of memes around this. But uh, you know, you can never have enough intelligence. So go, go accumulate I, it. Knowledge, knowledge I, can be part of it. I believe we can dodge a lot of the, these jokes if we would name it intelligence reports. Instead of just intelligence. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, please. I want to veto this. Like I, 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 I really, definitely want to veto be, this. There will it be should be intelligence. Of... You have to earn intelligence to be able to use this. <laughs> yes. Feature. That would be that would be great. Um by the way, El Schleimer says, Yeah, I watched the wartime video and I'm curious about the two robot clones of you both, like Westworld. Good work to the engineering department. Yes, so look, when we record this video and the story and we can this is a quick off topic, right? The story of how we recorded this video is a bit, bit frustrating because we sat down with actually Sean and I and, and, um, and Vesary on, on a video call listening to us recording ourselves in the office here because we're at the end of lockdown and can't have anyone else here yet. Um, and it turns out after we sat here for like three hours, they listened to us, we sat and recorded all of this, um, the audio was crap. Um, so we had to come back and re-record the whole thing um, a second time and obviously when we're sitting here and we're trying to like like present this in a coherent fashion you, you tend to kind of kind of present it in a slow and steady manner because it'll, it's easy for everybody to understand even if they don't have english as a, as a first language right so yeah we try we try but it's uh it, it is a struggle okay um Okay, so um, let's 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 move to the next topic. Actually, be between between this, like before we move to submarines, maybe to to grab some some smaller questions um, about other things. Uh, so there are questions, of course, about uh, Godzilla versus Kong uh, collaboration. When is this coming? Soon, but I can't give you a definite date yet. So please just you know keep an eye on the portal. It will be there in a future not too far away. Um, Demo Impact on YouTube was also asking about whether there is a chance for the Transformers content to come back maybe it depends a bit on the collaboration and uh, whether we're going to be able to bring it back but i hope we're going to be able to, uh, to bring it back because the uh, skins are absolutely fantastic and i would love to give you the opportunity to get your hands on it if you missed out on that in the past um what else was there of course there are questions about azulane uh collaboration when 
And as soon as I'm allowed yes. to talk about any potential new stuff coming out with Azure Lane, then I would be very happy to talk about it. Uh, right now, I d I'm not allowed to say yes. anything, but I hope Dantas, as you can see, he's basically chomping at the bits because he is so passionate about Azure Lane in his own time. And he does just... just How that's, the that's the only thing he plays in his every time. It's a, you know, you know the, the weeps, the weeps in our team, they always try to convince me like uh, Tanatoy to just like, you should, should watch more of this, but <laughs> You're overall... You're going to so much shit. Someone clip this, please, and send it to Tanatoy for me. No. Um, look, I, we, I know. Know, we, we know you love to have more, more, more uh, content from, for example, Azure Lane and also other collaborations, right? And um, it's just always a, a tricky topic because unless we're allowed to officially talk about it, but everything is signed and NDAs are lifted and so on, then we can officially go here, you know, on the stream and show you all the content and talk about it. But right now, that is not the case, unfortunately. I, I just remember the first ever question which was asked when I for the first time joined the European stream, like it was almost a two years ago, if I remember correctly, or something like that. And the question was, what's so nice waifu? Of course, you should always have a waifu ready. Um, I also have to say that one of, one of my favorite things that we did on the portal um, was we actually would go through a quiz and it would show you which ship would fit you. Like what, yes. what would be your perfect yes. uh, um, fit? Yes, uh, our, our, our content team, uh, they, they, they can come up with some really good stuff. And then uh, while we on unrelated topics, Driver X Pro is asking whether there are going to be any any streams for a Victory Day. So we won't have a special stream here um, from, from our side about Victory Day because this weekend we're going to be having the King of the Sea stream happening on Saturday and Sunday for the EU regional finals. Um, but I think there's a special activity planned if you are uh, into Russian streams where we're actually going to have like a special activity going on. And also don't forget that starting tomorrow, there's going to be the Kirov Marathon, where you can get your hands on a Kirov for free, plus a new camouflage, a permanent one for that ship. So uh, don't miss out on this. Uh, plus, of course, special special bonuses or bony for Mr. Evan, if he's watching, um, plus, plus uh, additional victory salute camouflages and so yes. on for the weekend. Plus yes. discounts, lots of stuff. Just uh, take a look on the, on the portal. There's a new publication about all of the things happening this weekend. Plenty of stuff. There was one last question here about Super Battleships from one of our absolute uh, regulars from Cordit Veteran. And he's asking, please tell me, I'm, I'm going to read this in slightly, I'm, I'm sensing he's angry. Uh, please tell me how you get the 48.3 centimeter guns for the German battleships. The whole archive of Krupp has no documents about this. Krupp was the only German gun factory that can build guns of that caliber. And they only had plans for 42 centimeters, 45 centimeters and 50 centimeters. <laughs> That's the question which, detail, uh, which uh, requires a lot of uh, details diving to have a proper answer, and this is not, regrettably, the stuff which I have uh, by my hand at the moment. So if you leave this question to our guys, and tomorrow they will come to me and remind me about it, probably I will dig the answer out. Can, but can at just, the moment, regrettably, I can't. Can't you just, like upscale it a tiny bit and call it 50 centimeters because that's just it's it's a negligible <laughs> difference <laughs> at that size okay. we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll get back to you god eat veteran i don't know um and there's a reason i, I just don't know what it is okay uh Chrysantos? um i think that were most of the questions that i've seen I've, of course the questions for example about unique uh, upgrades for other tier 10 ships currently we don't have any ready, but um, sooner or later, I'm sure there's going to be more content um, like this, but it's just not something I would expect uh, within the next few updates. That's also true for maps. Um, I've seen quite a few questions also on the Watchline video about, hey, what's going to happen with maps? And I think it's going to be also a nice transition to the next topic. We're currently not having any new maps because um, the team that is responsible for this is mostly working on the underwater world that we want to have for submarines um, ready to go. So this is why currently we don't have any new maps, but as soon as we're done with this, I'm sure there will be more new maps in the future. So. I hope that also answers this question and brings us to the next topic of a uh, beautiful <laughs> underwater world and convoy. Why are you laughing? I'm, I can't read it out. I just, yeah. I just, I just, somebody just said something and it's inappropriate and very funny. Okay, now I have to <laughs> scroll up. Okay, um, so Conway, why don't we, why don't we get to the next topic of submarines? Yes, submarines. So, um, if you remember what we said in our um, waterline video submarines will be returning to world of warships um they're going to be doing that in a special manner so first of all uh obviously we'll, there'll be some public tests and everything um, as usual but they will join um ranked battles uh, for a special season um 
which I think is, is very interesting because it gives us a nice test bed for this and will make, um, you know, like a, a very different season of Frank Battles. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, about that, Shola? Yes, for sure. Uh, so, for example, as, as some of the chat members know here, I'm a person, a person who is working with community contributors uh, program in World of Warships. And yesterday, after the what, uh, after the Waterline video went live, we had a discussion with community contributors on why we we've decided to in, to test submarines in rocket battles. Like this is a very questionable decision from from like any point of view and indeed it requires at least some explanation why so um like we have to test submarines we can't just drop them into random battles and live with it like we've learned our lesson we that we can't just do it overnight to all the game and then uh and that gradual approach in the sphere will work better so um we have to start somewhere we had several tests on a uh, dedicated server. We had an event in the on the main server in 094. And here's the thing. Such events, um, they, <laughs> like, there is not much, um, not much reason to stay for long in uh, in such game modes. Not much reason to play on a test server for a long time. That's uh, that's also why they are not that long, for example. Like, they have prime times, they are, um they were running for like a week or so and 094 event was running for if i remember correctly a couple of weeks or even for a month uh, i don't remember at the moment I think like exactly okay. yes so um but nonetheless like uh, um sooner or later the amount of players we, uh, who are playing this mode is dropping it happens with almost ever uh, each and every non-core gameplay game mode and um in order to have a proper test of submarines, we need to have a stable and um, big audience playing them, like in different situations, uh, to uncover all possible interactions, to uncover a lot of different bugs which may exist there, to get uh, all the proper statistics, data and feedback, to, get, to have uh, the best view and representation of the situation with a new class. So, um, and as the probably the main uh, game mode of our game, Random Battles, uh, we need something very similar to them, similar, uh, as similar as it possible, so it should be PvP, scenario, uh, PvP game mode, and out of those we have uh, Random Battles, uh, some temporary events, uh, um, Clan Battles and Ranked Battles, and out of these uh, modes, the... <laughs> Okay, I can say everything uh, everything I read right now because my cat is in the camera and the chat is driven away. So. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. By the way, chat, Shona just moved, hence the boxes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, coming back to, we need to have something very similar to random battles. Uh, and the most similar mode with a stable player base will be ranked battles. Uh, we understand that it may be perceived as a poor decision, but here are our arguments why we need it. Here's why we have... Uh, uh, like, I, I believe that everyone will agree that we, uh, that submarines should have a proper testing. That's uh, like an obvious fact. And if we need a proper testing, it should be done in something that relates to the uh, f fate that they may encounter when they get released. So, PvP modes, PvE modes, um, Mm. and so on, and the rankets is one of the steps which we may take. So uh, that's why we've taken such a decision. Okay. Um, and we have the first good question here from Dingo Zoo, um, who says, um, most destroyers die pretty fast, but they are best against subs. Are there any limitations on subs to balance this late games, or will SAP be added to Zero late tutorial? So that last part, no. Uh, we generally don't go back and like change the concept of existing premium ships if there's not uh, like a balance reason to do it. So likely no. Uh, for the first one, do you want to? I, I can if you want to. Or not. I did after record just, the waterline. Just do it, I know, sorry. right? So first of all, submarines will have a limited dive time. Uh, whereas if you remember in the old concepts, uh, you had uh, you know like a certain amount of battery power. You had to go to the surface. You had to recharge. You will not be able to recharge during the game, right? So your dive time is a limited resource that you'll have to spend wisely, or you know just sit at the surface at the end of the game, which is not really good for you. Um, in addition, you can actually 
influence this somewhat by playing other ships. If you do hydro or radar um, submarines, as far as I understand it in the current um, concept, that means that they will use their battery faster. Shona, what are you doing with your camera? He's, he's just uh, making notes. Are you the cat, the cat focusing on the cat? Okay, no, it's all good. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is that we will be giving cruisers and battleships anti-submarine warfare planes um, as an armament. Um, so I don't know if you remember how this looked in the in the game mode that we had, but essentially what you'll be able to do is select an area um, within a certain distance of your ship. Uh, planes will come, drop uh, depth charges, and so if the submarine... Um, makes a mistake and gets spotted, you will be able to, to sink him, even as a non-destroyer. Did I cover it, Shona? Yes, I believe so. Um, like, we have talked about uh, different possible... If we will, will talk about what changes to submarines in the next iteration, we need to uh, get back to, like, the first iterations when the only destroyers could hurt them underwater, etc., etc. And uh, overall, I believe that the... One of the main point, uh, points which was uh, brought to the attention during the previous tests of submarines was the fact that submarine could stay underwater for too long time and could be a menace until the late game, uh, in the beginning of the game, in mid game, and in the late game. Uh, all the time it could be a silent hunter, which um, and you can do nothing against her. And that's why we are thinking about the situation in which submarine has to manage its resources, manage the time it can spend underwater during the battle. So it can serve as a, some sort of limitation to the possibilities of a submarine. So you can't spend all the time underwater, you can't be, um, uh, you can't be stealthy for, at that level of stealth for the whole duration of the battle. Yeah, um, there are one or two comments about this is like non-historical, doesn't make any sense. Please remember, right, that we need to make submarines work in our game, which means our primary concern is going to be game balance and how how to make this work with a with a solid concept. Even though um, some of the things like the the unrechargeable battery might not be um, entirely historically or well, not historically accurate. Um, there was a question here: What about CVs? How are they going to fight uh, destroy uh, submarines? Submarines. Um, right now, I don't have any details about the new ways of uh, fighting submarine uh, submarines with planes. With uh, I, I mean, with the aircraft carrier planes. Um, I believe that it will be mostly focused on uh, attacking submarines when they are spotted on the surface, or making the or finishing the, those subs uh, which spent all their battery in closer to late in a late game. But uh, probably, probably, I can't promise here anything. At some moment in the future, we will get something to, for CVs or for specific CVs to fight with submarines. And also, uh, I've seen a comment from Kardit Veteran. Uh, is the BBCA submarine warfare uh, close to this um, mechanic of Netherlands cruisers? Yes, the, uh, these mechanics are very similar. Um, the mechanic of, dive, uh, of uh, depth charges dropped by uh, planes by the uh, by the call squadrons is very very similar in its form to the mechanic which is uh, shown for an Netherlands cruiser okay um two questions that are popping up a lot because i think there is a little bit of a misunderstanding for some place watch the waterline episode and i'm fearing now that we're removing the hydro, hydro phone. which is which is not the case so what we're yes. removing is the, is the hydrophone mechanic that was specific to you know how you would basically know where the submarine is actually roughly at compared to the hydroacoustic search which will not be touched it will still stay in the game so shona if you maybe can give a little bit of extra info like why why we made this choice and what exactly that means for players yes so uh the hydrophone mechanic it's a mechanic very similar to uh rpf which was present on the ships in order to find and fight submarines underwater. Uh, it will indicate not only the direction to the submarine, but also uh, when you're close enough, it will indicate its approximate position on the surface of the water with uh, like white circles. Mm. And uh, it was a mechanic which was introduced uh, uh, between te uh, between testing and the beginning of a submarine testing in order to add some way of, fight of submarine fighting for ships primarily for detecting them. And um, in the coming test, we are going to change like anti-submarine warfare in two ways. First of all, the detectability of a submarine will uh, 
will <laughs> will reduce linearly when you dive deeper the detectability won't just uh become smaller uh, on a huge scale when you reach certain depth it will um, it will be re reduced linearly and the second thing um <clears throat> as we said earlier we introduced in the limited battery so together these two changes will make it, so, it noticeably different to fight submarines um, I can say easier or more difficult because it's uh, somewhat incomparable without uh, actually testing it a lot. But um, for me, I see it as a way that submarines should play much more, much more careful. And if we would pair it with the uh, former mechanic of um, uh, of hydrophone or the uh, this RPF related mechanic, um, it would will just make the submarine life uh, very very painful. So uh, this is a sort of a balancing. We make it um, a bit, uh, a bit. Uh, we make managing of better and more difficult for submarines. So it will require more attention. It will require more skill to do it. Uh, but on the other hand, we make it somewhat more difficult for a surface ship to find submarine in the open when submarine is doing nothing underwater. Yes. Um, quick, quick, quick thing. Right. There's a lot of uh, quite a few comments about like why are you doing this in ranked? Ranked is dead now. Um, ranked has always been changing, right? We've always made changes to the rule sets. We've always like uh, played around a bit to give it a different experience as well. And it, this is also not going to be like like a permanent thing. It's not like it's like oh, ranked is now always going to be the submarine game mode. No, we'll have um, a season of ranked where where there'll be a, a nice way for you guys to test it, um, where there's a good motivation to go play it because there's still steel. It's something new, and I, I think it'll be interesting. And if you don't like it, right? It's not going to be permanent, so don't worry. But I think it's a good test bed, um, and it throws it in without uh, immediately um, affecting random battles. Yeah, there's a related question here from Knutzil, um, who's asking how are surface ships that don't get access to depth charges or um, ASW planes supposed to fight a submerged submarine? So that's that's pretty much a similar aspect um, as you have with other classes in the game and how they interact with each other, right? If you are only by yourself let's say in a battleship, you play against the destroyer, which is just using its detectability, like the concealment uh, advantage that it has against that battleship, only by yourself, you will not be able to really counter this. Now, a few changes will affect this for submarines in general with, for example, um, what we said uh, here is with the limited amount of uh, submerged time you will be uh, having available due to the limited amount of battery duration. So that's going to be one of the aspects um, that will help you fight this. But overall, what it worships is a team-based game, right? And you need to work together to kind of counter what the enemy is uh, potentially able to do because of the different classes and all of the different consumables and kind of strengths and weaknesses all of these ships have. And that is also true for how you would fight against a submarine, similarly to fighting against a DD, for example. So it's a, it's a matter of like working together and knowing what the enemy ship can do, what it can't do, and then using that to your advantage to counter it. So yeah. that, that's uh, hopefully answering your question. Uh, there's another question here from AD Pre. Why are we choosing to go for a limited dive touch? Um, so why are we not doing limited dive time and then recharge on the surface versus a like a fixed amount um, of dive time available per oh. battle? <clears throat> Formally, it just won't. Uh, it, <coughs> it won't be that different. Yes, for example, if we have like three minutes battery, which will be able to recharge, or we have like uh, ten to twelve minutes or something like that of a battery for the whole duration of a battle. Um, this is something that may be seen in future regarding the tests, but overall these are pretty similar and um, the longer battery without recharge allows you more flexibility uh, in comparison to a shorter battery which is ab able to be recharged. Okay. Uh, Kirsten is asking whether submarines will be able to mount camouflages and can they use signal flags? <laughs> Most probably in some form, yes, but we will see how, how exactly it will work for them. Oh, and on a related note, because there were questions about whether submarines are going to be able to use any kind of guns that might be mounted on top of them. You mean secondaries, for example? Yes. Oh, sure. <laughs> so, um, um, currently, currently not I planned? But At last test, we didn't have it, but things may change in future, yes. 
I mean, a, a, apart from apart from uh, what's it, the Surpuf, I don't think any of the, the the submarines really carried guns that could harm or threaten a warship. Yes, they used them to, to you know, like gun down helpless merchantmen and that kind of thing. But for like against a warship, that's a bit of a pea shooter and won't really do you any good. Yeah. Um, because I think uh, not everybody completely understands what what kind of um, gameplay mechanics actually use the battery. Can you just summarize for our players what kind of activities in a submarine would require the battery or would deplete the battery more than others? Uh, I don't know exactly the settings right now because, uh, yes, this may be set up different for different activities, but primarily when you're submerged, your battery will be discharged at a certain rate. Uh, besides that, we are also adding um, a mechanic that uh, the battery will be uh, discharging faster when you are detected by a hydrophone or a radar. This is some form of a way to uh, influence submarine's behavior, uh, submarine's capabilities when you, for example, don't have uh, uh, anti-submarine warfare planes or death charges on your ship. So you can detect it by your hydrophone, for example, uh, and thus reduce your battery faster. Okay, thank you. Uh, Eric on YouTube is asking um, what happens if you ascend with the submarine into another ship and what will happen? Will it count as a ramming? Um, that's at least how it worked before. If you uh, touch another ship with your ship, uh, it means boom. Just like, <laughs> and since just... you have like a very small HP pool as a submarine, this will probably end deadly for you. And depending on the HP pool of the enemy ship, maybe also for, for that ship. But overall, yes, it's a regular mechanic. If, you, if two ships collide, um, it will deal damage. Yeah, uh, you also need to uh, need to remember that the, the 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 submarines have an actual like like physical hitbox in the game, uh, which means that um, for instance, if uh, torpedoes are fired at um, you know like torpedoes from a surface ship are fired at a submarine, you can absolutely just dive underneath them. Um, so this is possible, and I believe there's also a situation that um, I think deep water car torpedoes can't hit the submarines anyway, right? But they they would technically go underneath. Yeah. Also, related question. Um, so, if a ship is sunk, is is we we know that the mechanic of the ship sinking will be visible, but will you also be able to see the shipwreck on the bottom of the sea? Um, if I remember, if I remember, on the last test, uh, the wreck disappeared after some time of uh, submerging, uh, and I don't know at the moment how exactly it will be after the updates to underwater world. Okay, so initially you will definitely see it, whether it's going to be there for the entire battle. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have to update you on this um, closer to the actual test. Um, oh, sorry, it's just a lot of different questions here about submarines. Um, of course, there are questions, uh, especially on YouTube, about will this be added to World of Warships Legends or World of Warships Blitz? We don't know. We are the PC team and we work on uh, the, the PC title. Um, of course, the other games might, you know, the other, let's say, the, the brothers and sisters of World of Warships on the different um, platforms might you know, take a look at what we're doing and implement it on, on their side. But overall, this this entire Waterline episode in this stream is only about the PC title. If you have related questions about whether any of this might appear in, for example, World of Warships Legends or World of Warships Blitz, please head over to the channels um, of our colleagues or, for example, to their Discord channels and uh, ask them there. Unfortunately, we cannot answer this for you. Yes. Can a submarine collide with a sinking ship? Hmm. Can the sinking ship sink the submarine? Regrettably, <laughs> I don't know. I'm very sorry, but such specifics. Um, <laughs> this is a very interesting thing, actually. But uh, probably a good thing for you guys to play around with uh, on the public test. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, but. I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect, expect it to sink to sink you. It might just work in the same way as no, it no, right now. We, when you, for example, we, collide with the wreck, that you just basically get stopped. Yeah, but we we do have sometimes these funky interactions where one ship slides like underneath ah. another, pushes it down. So who knows what? Who knows? I mean, what's you, will, you will. I mean, the hitboxes should probably hit each other. But just like we know, when a ship is sunk and you see the wreck on the water before it's actually submerging, you will you know collide. Okay, um, guys, if you have more questions about submarines, please. Uh, be be in chat and uh, ask your questions here. Um, what nations are going to have submarines? So um, a cyclone 
We talked about, for example, American, German, and Soviet uh, submarines initially. Um, there might also be more nations coming later on. But uh, Shonai, do we do we know which nations are going to be available first in the test again? Uh, we had, uh, I believe, the, uh, those nations which were available on the all all the tests we had. These were uh, German, uh, American, and Soviet. Exactly. Um, can you show us any other tier subs like Balao um, right now? I mean, Conway, we, we do have some videos if you want to um, show them. We, I, I, have, I have a video of submarines. I do have a video do, of... Do uh, you have a video of submarine mechanic for the ping? That was the one that we watched and decided it's too confusing and we're not going to show it. I thought, not the old mechanic, the new mechanic. Okay, anyway, that, that, anyway. Was, that was what. So look, uh, but we, we, do, do. we will have we will have more of this to show to well, you. We, we, we closer to the next test, um, so you will you will be able to see more. In terms of like the models and so on, we already shared a bit of information, but we don't have any update on these models, um, or should be able to show them in action right now. Um, so, but uh, we do have some uh, some nice visuals here for what the team has done with the underwater world because obviously submarines need somewhere to play. Uh, so you can have a little look at what it is actually currently looking at, uh, looking like um, underwater in uh, Special World of Warships versions where this is uh, the case. I think it looks quite nice. Expect the art department carrying comments right now. <laughs> yes, but the art department really does carry us. O o they always do. Um, even when we do good work, they they just do better. Yes. Um, will be submarine, uh, will submarines be immune to detonating like CVs? Submarines don't have main battery guns, so in game they shouldn't have magazines. Um, you can not see that's a very good question. I actually don't know whether submarines can detonate um, as a mechanic right now. Shonai, do you know by any chance? No, I don't. But submarines have that low amount of hit points that, <laughs> like, when you hit them, they are almost instantly deleted. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> we need a Cthulhu reference, and maybe, maybe we can put that somewhere. Um, oh, will the will, the will the full tech tree be available at the test, or came the different tier for ranked? So Yoda, I would expect um, each of the tests to only have one tier available. I mean, at first we're going to have a test on, you know, like for example, the public test, we're going to test all of the changes that we just talked about. And then for the rank battle season, I think it's too early to really talk about which ships are going to be available on which specific tier, unless Shonai has some information we can share at this point, but I don't think so. No, no. So but most us... probably we'll have a specific tier, yeah. on, like not the whole, or not the whole tree. Exactly. Um, of course, there are questions when we talk about torpedoes, um, um, whether the submarines uh, do have a limited amount of torpedoes or unlimited amount. So you do have unlimited amount of torpedoes, but your limiting factor is the reload time, as with any other um, torpedo carrying vessel. And um, then there was a question about... Oh, so I, I, had a, I had a question, if you, while you're looking, from sure. AJ on YouTube. He's asking, aside from depth charges, are squid mortars anti-submarine warfare rockets and hedgehogs going to be introduced on certain ships like the Friesland British DDs maybe but uh, right now I don't know about the specific plans like okay. hedgehogs would be amazing uh, would look look yes, look, yes, look, look, totally. look look very very cool very cool yes. okay I tend to agree and I tend to agree and even if it's not planned I believe that it should be Yes. Did, 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 did you find the question? Uh, no, no, no. Unfortunately, it, it, it scrolled away. But um, there's a question here that is related to Twitch rewards because I've seen some players did have an issue with receiving their Twitch container. All of the other Twitch shops should be fine. And there is indeed a small issue with a limited amount of players, but those who were affected and who contacted our customer support got the Twitch container. So if you guys, if you have any issue with Twitch shops, which is, um, you know, you get the Twitch drop, you relog if you're already in the game, or you log into the game and it's not appearing and you're sure you have your account uh, linked, I think now just relink it and see whether the uh, reward appears. If you have any issue, you can contact our customer support and we'll try to help you. That is the best way to, you know, get help from our side. Okay. Last question about uh, submarines. Can deep water torpedoes hit submarines? Uh, on the last test, they, if I believe correctly, couldn't. If things have changed 
how will they change, we will see, because at least there are quite some time until the test will happen. So there are still some things which might change before that. Yes. Now, for those of you saying drops aren't working, by the way, I apparently just got I notified I just scored a drop, and I can now claim it. And no, there's, there's, a, there's, there's an issue connected to Twitch container, so if you have that issue and you didn't receive your Twitch container, but you received the mission, just contact our customer support. I will try to help you. Okay. Um, um, there's a question here from uh, Sispitiest about uh, why don't you run a poll whether people want submarines in this game at all or not. We know we know that a lot of people want to have this because we do run surveys and uh, similar things about this topic. We also know that it can be a very polarizing topic, right? It's a new class. It, it will add another layer to the game. But overall, um, we think it's a good addition to the game and many people want it. Not everybody will want it. That's, that's true, right? Um, but that is always the case when you add new content to the game. So um, it's, not, it's not like nobody wants it. Um, By the so. way, there's a great suggestion here from Captain Minia to add um, historical wrecks as underwater Easter eggs. Um, on one hand, that sounds like a good uh, logical idea. On the other hand, usually Easter eggs uh, are somewhat small. They are somewhat Just, difficult to find. Small, them. Wreck. You can hide very, it. Very, very small. Like uh, a, a scale wreck, yes. Maybe, who knows. Okay, um, should we move on to the next topic? Sure. I mean, we'll we'll probably come back to like a few questions that, that, later on, true. but let's let's come to the next topic. Also, by the way, um, if anybody right here is interested, right, Talker Bill Hilton on YouTube is willing to fight anybody who doesn't want submarines. So um, he's there on YouTube. Uh, go and get in touch and uh, sort it out. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, let's talk about Dutch Dutch cruisers. Yes, Dutch, Dutch cruisers. cruisers. <laughs> I have. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Um, I think you may have seen it already, but we have a little video of what our cool new um, Dutch uh, me mechanic is going to look like with uh, our airstrike. I'm going to pop this on in the background. Oh, these are just the Dutch cruisers. Um, so Dutch cruisers, Shonai, I? You want to want to want to want to say something before we go into questions? So, so Dutch cruisers, um, they have. Uh... Uh, one 152 millimeters for remote character until the tier 8. Uh, starting with tier 8, the uh, caliber and the armor uh, becomes uh, better and bigger. Like starting uh, 203 millimeter guns on tier 8 and up to 283 uh, millimeters on the tier 10. Um, so they are becoming more durable, they are intended for mid-range fighting, they have the usual H and AP shells, um, and as a consumer, uh, and as a different type of armament, they have a new mechanic and an airstrike. So, here, here it comes, yes? Yes, uh, here it comes, I'll, I'll show it, there you go. So this is what yeah. the airstrike looks like. Uh, so you can see, you can mark an area, um, you know, like not in, at an infinite distance, but you mark an area, uh, you can see the countdown coming, uh, counting down, uh, and then the planes arrive. Drop there. So, to, maybe to explain it a bit. So how how does this work? So if you if you want to deploy um, this this armament, it it kind of works like you know aiming aiming at another ship. So you have to kind of like you zoom in, zoom out, kind of try to figure out a good angle how you would um, aim. You need to designate an area where this is supposed to be dropped. That area um, is limited uh, right now between 8 to 10 kilometers uh, where you would be able to launch that. And then it takes a significant amount of time to actually reach the target. So it's not like in within like two seconds this is going to be happening, but more like in a range of, let's say, roughly 20 seconds where you would be, um, where you can expect that armament to actually land there. So it gives the enemy ship a significant amount of time to actually dodge it if, if you're launching this. Yes. Um, yeah, it's. Um, I think it's a, it can be a really interesting mechanic. Um, I think we've seen it used quite effectively on public test uh, on bomb uh, smoke clouds, um, like slow ships, and um, it gives you lots of time to, to dodge and evade if you see them coming. Because obviously, not just do you see the planes coming, uh, you see the bombs dropping. You have the time of the parachute drop, and um, they are also susceptible to anti-aircraft fire. So there's definitely a counterplay on the a counterplay to them. I think it'll give the Dutch CVs like a really interesting, interesting different way to uh, engage. Um, me personally, when trying those out on a public test, I've kind of struggled with it to hit uh, the moving ships. It's very difficult with such a delay, both on the planes arriving and after that on, drums, uh, on bombs dropping. And um, 
besides that, uh, the one question I can expect is that uh, these planes do not spot. Yes. yes, and so you you can also it's it's not possible to, for example, like sit on one side of the island and deploy to the other side of the island. You kind of have to have visibility, like if you want to aim at a ship, um, to be able to drop it there. So this is kind of like more of a mechanic where I would say it's it's hard to aim at a very like how do I say it like a dynamic target that is moving a lot, um, but probably better to dislodge somebody who's you know just standing right in front of you and uh, is only trying to move very slowly uh, backwards. So. I think it's going to help with that aspect. Yep. And so Julian Heafy is asking, can they be shot down? Yes, they can be shot down. Um, L Max asking, will the Dutch airstrike work against subs? And L Mac, uh, if the submarine is close enough to the surface, then it's it's just an HE bomb explosion, so uh, it'll be damaged. If it's diving underwater, uh, then then not. So these are an anti-Petra weapon. Um, Do you not, mean, um, you... Could be yes. You know, it's yes. like, like, I mean, of course, Petro being, let's say, a representation of a certain place there, right? Just being bound tanking. Um, exactly. This is something that can be very useful against this. So it's a, like a different a different additional armament for Dutch cruisers where you can use it to, to your advantage. Penzo says, can't wait to run a triple division of three uh, Leuves and uh, one shot a poor Petro. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it. That's going to be going to be yeah. interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, apart from um, uh, this, right? Uh, Dutch cruisers are going to be a very, very, I think, solid uh, choice as new ships go. And we also have a premium ship coming along. Um, we talked about it already uh, in in the waterline and briefly before. I'll I'll pop it up here. Right. This is this beautiful premium ship, De Zeven Provincien. Um, and it's going to be available to be built in a dockyard. Now, I already saw one or two questions about the dockyard earlier, and it's mostly from Dutch people who want to know where in Rotterdam is the historical <laughs> port. So which part of the Rotterdam port is going to be in game? They probably want to, yes. They, 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 do you know? No. <laughs> I, I also Did you find also, out? Sorry, guys. Uh, Dilly Gav is asking, like, what tier is it? It's tier 8. Yes. Like uh, today is a very special stream, I believe, because like uh, guys are asking such a lot of very detailed and specific questions, and uh, I th I'm I'm really sorry that a lot of them are just uh, not known to me at the moment. Yeah, and uh, Dikul is asking, will you celebrate the new line in Den Helder? Look, we certainly would like to, but I'm not sure it's going to be possible yet with uh, COVID restrictions. To like, we we would look Dutch cruisers new line. We would love to do like a proper event, you know, invite you all to the museum, have like a proper day of it. But it's it's we, we, we're trying, but uh, until people are actually vaccinated and where we are, at least there's there's no end in sight to that that dilemma. Um, I, I think it's going to be unlikely. It's a shame. Yeah. We're very much missing it. And uh, for those who are off topic, for those of you who don't know, uh, Gamescom is going to be also fully digitally this year. So they also scrapped their their plans of having any kind of uh, offline presence. So it's going to be a while until we see each other again, chat, like in person, but we'll get there. Yeah. Schnass is asking, are the Dutch cruisers part of the European tech tree or a new nation? So during the testing phase, so if you, for example, see them on the public test server, um, they will be uh, under the uh, European or pan-European tech tree, but once they are released, they are going to be their own new nation and the Friesland will join them. So it's going to be a new nation, uh, the Netherlands. And yes. uh, tracks you has a question about whether the permanent camouflage for these ships is going to be orange. I haven't seen the special camouflage so. yet, but I really hope it's not going to be orange. Ah, oh, come on! Should be orange. Shouldn't, it be, won't should, be, orange. Should, shouldn't be a gouda. But what you say? Wargaming can't do anything until Mr. Conway cuts that hair. Look, he compare did. waterline to this. I I went to cut the hair. I mean, Maybe it's not it's amazing, but you know, it's it's serviceable, and that's what I was going for. Like just serviceable, low effort. Um, but there was a question to follow up here from Somtor, who's asking, why are the Dutch getting their own line instead of it being in the EU line, which was made for this? I, I can if you want to, uh, if, 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 if you want me to, or you can. Yeah, yeah. go for it. So, please. the whole reason we had this EU line is so we have somewhere to put like small nations that have only a limited amount of ships. The Dutch were in there with Friesland initially because we had to put Friesland somewhere. We wanted to put Friesland in the game. But the Dutch actually built quite a lot of ships and they had plans 
for a lot of different ships. So this is not going to be the only tech tree line that the Dutch are going to be getting. So at some point in the future, we're going to add more Dutch ships. And we want to give them a bit of their own flavor, a bit of their own play style. Um, so they're getting their own nation as well. This is a great thing for, for, for I think, Dutch players and for people who are fan of Dutch ships and ships in general. Um, and yeah, it's, we, we said the same thing, like, for instance, about Poland. If we ever decide, hey, we can, can make like a, a Polish tree, then it's also a possibility that Poland would, you know, go and get its own nation again. But it's, you know, like, we have to see how things go and if this is ever going to happen. But um, yeah. and it's, it's, always, it's, it's always very tricky, right? Because when you have a topic like, like this, I'm sure that especially Dutch players will be very happy to have their own nation in the game, just like you are if you, for example, have, you know, like the, the US Navy um, as, as as a separate nation. On the other hand, yes, it would have certain advantages if they would all be underneath the same tech tree in terms of like certain certain game mechanics as, for example, what's happening with the commanders. I see questions related to the Friesland captain right now. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can share yet about this topic, what's going to happen with the captain and so on. And this will be real a bit soon, uh, like a, a bit later closer to the actual um, release of these ships. So um, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. Yes. Oh, we have that other thing. Can we tease the other thing that we have coming for the Dutch? No, Dutch no, 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 not yet, not yet. No, no. Really? We might have, so look, we have something really cool um, for, for um, I think the Dutch our, our people will like it. Yes, mm. I think the Dutch people will really like it. You will like it. That's all I can say is like, we, we've worked on something that I hope you're going to enjoy. And uh, uh, people from the Helder are going to be very, very happy about this, but more I cannot say at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, when shame. will be the next? Oh God, okay, there's a completely unrelated question from Red PR guy that I just grabbed. When will be the next server transfer? I don't know. I don't know whether there's going to be a new one, um, but if there is one, you will find out about this, of course, here on the stream and on our portal. Um, Albin, Albin uh, in terms of like the Friesland captain right now, look, there will be more information about this entire topic because it's, of course, a bit of a complicated topic, um, how we're going to be handling this. But, you know, we if we introduce the Dutch nation, it makes sense to move the Friesland to the Dutch nation because it is a Dutch ship. So we'll have to see how we're going to do this. Presentees, exactly. I'm, I'm, I love to tease. Like, I also look at... <laughs> would be up to me i would be very happy to just sit here and talk about like the entire road for the next next six months and say like you oh, let me open up the excel file exactly let me just open up the the, the, the excel file and talk do, about it no, do you want to do you want to bet how long it takes for someone to turn off the electricity to the screen <laughs> i think a think lot of lot of droid would be basically uh, on its on his way with the chopper here i know but like there's a lot of things coming to the game um a lot of cool stuff and a lot of things we would love to talk about but there's also good reason why we cannot talk about certain things because they're not final and we don't want to set up wrong expectations on your side. We want to talk about things um, in, a, in a manner as we do here with the waterline video where we can tease certain aspects, you know, like the bigger picture of what we're working on, um, even though some of the details are not finalized yet. But in terms of like very detailed uh, information, we want to do this when everything is set in stone. So we're not, you're not going to be in a situation where you kind of had expectations and then suddenly it's completely the opposite or very different to what we said. So it's yes. the kind of balancing act that we have to figure out. And I know, you know, like you, you want to know everything and you want to know it right now, <laughs> but I can't give that to you. Um, a few uh, follow-up questions. Naked ship so, is, this, is this the shipboard channel? We what? love it, chat. Look at that naked steel. What, mm. what is going to happen mm. to people who have a special captain, uh, Schwilski, on their Friesland? The same as the uh, the whole transition of Friesland to the uh, Netherlands tech tree, we will see. It's something that yet to be uh, has to be defined. Okay, we will we'll let you know as soon as we can know. Um, to be to be fair, full disclaimer, I also don't know yet because nobody's told me yet. Um, um, I don't know. think Shona knows yet either. <laughs> it's just we haven't okay. decided yet. El, El, El Shlimo is asking whether uh, we can stop circling the ships. He will get motion sickness. No worries, El Shlimo. The solution for this is you just have to keep spinning at the same speed on your chair. It will solve the problem. <laughs> also, um, someone is asking, Shona, a unique commander when? And will there be alternate hairstyles? <laughs> Most probably there won't be a unique commander of me. And uh, uh, for some bizarre reason, I've even missed the opportunity to make a photo of myself to be used as a commander at all. So maybe at some moment. 
only you knew someone in the development office or the art team you could talk to about this. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, please uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong here. Lex Mechanic has a question about airstrike and visibility. Can you clarify? Previously suggested using it to hit ships behind islands. Um, so uh, technically the way it works is if you want, if Mr. Conway can maybe play play the video again for the airstrike. Hey guys, to Mr. Conway? Um, I, I can, but guys, so look, I see a bit of spammage on, on, on Twitch, right? I am very allergic to spam. If you spam, not only will I ban you, I'll turn the unique chat mode back on. You yeah. move on, chat. So if you if you take a uh, look at the mechanic that... Oh, sorry, Sean, unless you want to say something. And also to prevent more spam, uh, how about um, how about me answer the question from at least Blackleaf1978, why you cancel Division Star? So... Um, this was a mechanic which we intended to, uh, not to have on a permanent basis, but rather come and uh, be used to uh, specific occasions. So you may expect it to come later, but not be present uh, every time. On the other hand, we had a significant change to the, day, for example, daily uh, rewards, the form which now is spent across 25 days and involves the container at, at, at the end. So, uh, in terms of rewarding, you have uh, something specific, something reliable, and the Division Star is an additional um, semi-event stuff, which encourages playing in Division for at a specific period of time, and most probably it will be tied to specific uh, occurrences. Indeed. So, um, to get back to the mechanic that you see here uh, in the background playing on this side, right next to me, so, you, just to, how to imagine how this works, right? It's working very similarly to how to aim at an enemy ship. If there's something blocking your view, you won't be able to move that, you know, area of the strike. You won't be able to, to put it there. So it's not possible to really be right next to an island and then suddenly drop it here, for example, over the over the map view. This is not possible, like an old RTS uh, CV style. Um, of course, we're still working on this mechanic. You know, like it's, it's, it's something new that we're working on. So things can change. But at least right now, it's more about you have to be able to see that area to be able to, we can adjust the point of view slightly like with a spotting plane, um, but you're not going to be able to suddenly drop it on the other side of a big island, but it's rather be in the right position to be able to deploy this. And then within a certain time frame, you know, let's say around 20 seconds, the bombs would land there. That's how it works. Um, and the planes are not going to be spotted. Also, we have Mr. Conway's hair in chat. Now Thank you, Mr. Conway's hair. Less, you're, you're less uh, of a focus today. Um, I'm very sorry about that. Um, yeah. uh, not so serious, maybe a serious question from Jonathan, uh, 78NL. He might be Dutch. Uh, he's asking if the Dutch ships are going to be able to have a, a strobe waffle uh, consumable. N not as a part of the first cruiser line. Okay, so strobe waffles for Dutch CDs. You heard it here first. Okay, are we any more questions about the um, the topic at hand? Otherwise, we can move on. Where's Mr. Corby's right leg? Good question. Um, mm, 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 mm. Will there be an Alaska B for Black Friday? Maybe. Possibly. Um, if there's going to be an Alaska B, then probably around Black Friday. Black if Friday, you... by the way, you'll be surprised to hear. Uh, Black Friday 21, uh, 2021 is happening on Black Friday in 2021. Yeah. Will there be a Dutch collection released alongside the ships for multiple flags and colors? Maybe yes, maybe no. What's going to be part of the Dutch, you know, entire arc? We'll tell you in the future. Yes. Right um, what about odd tier CVs? When can we expect their return? Not anytime soon. There's no no immediate plans uh, to do this. We know they're still sitting there. We spent a lot of time, effort, and money in making those models beautiful. So we want to use them again at some point, but this it's not it's not the time yet. Yeah. Okay. So um, what's next on our topic list? I kind of forgot what what. Uh, so we've we've talked about super battleships. We've talked about submarines. We've talked about attack cruisers. Um, what? Attack aircraft. Attack aircraft, yeah. rockets. Okay. Yes. So while, while you push that button, just maybe one one question that I've seen uh, being asked very very often, and maybe good to sneak in here because there are some questions about potential changes to secondaries or potential buffs to secondaries um, after the cap skill rework. Shonai, can you maybe give a little bit of context to secondaries current state, um, if you so, have anything? So uh, let's start with. Uh, <laughs> 
the fact that secondaries is a part of a close quarter combat build, the part of the efficiency of a close combat build. So um, right now, uh, after the 0 10 4, as we said, we will be focusing more on the balance of a specific ships, on the performance of specific ships, uh, how they interact in a new um, new meta of new skills. So um, and uh, after that, uh, after probably some balance changes during the summer, closer to the autumn, we will have uh, some other changes to the skills. I can't promise that there will be changes to the secondary uh, secondary related skills. However, um, we will make sure that both quarter fighting, it's not necessarily just using your secondaries to deal damage. It involves uh, awareness for uh, awareness. It involves uh, survivability, getting to the, in that close combat, uh, having, for example, a fast reload uh, when there are enemies nearby, etc., etc. There is a lot of different ways of encouraging close quarter combat, and uh, they have no intent to make uh, uh, close quarter combat tips weaker or poorer than any other playstyle. And Can we just um, make them OP. I'd be okay with that. I, uh, I, I don't believe that making certain play style OP or too popular is uh, something good for um, for the game itself, for the game health in the long run, because um, over, over the long uh, time, all, um, this will lead to like a f somewhat of frustration and the game getting boring without different approaches to it. Uh, difference and... Um, uh, different situations you encounter during the bat uh, during your play session and your uh, lifetime as a player is something that uh, is very important for everyone because uh, uh, too repetitive playing, too repetitive situations, the same things over and over again is not something good. It 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 becomes boring. And getting back to the secondaries, yes, they may be important part of the play style of strip. They deal damage. They make uh, fires, uh, etc. But they themselves, uh, they themselves, is not the only important factor of close quarter combat. And yes, we don't want to them to be like meaningless at all. But also, we don't want um, to have a situation where it's the only part of a strip which is important for close quarter. So we will see how the situation will evolve after 0 10 4 with the meta obviously changing after removal of the dead eye. This is a very important step here. Um, and after that, we will work with the balance of specific ships. And after that, in the autumn, uh, somewhere around autumn, we will work with the skills again. Okay. Excellent. Um, anything you could say specifically about Siegfried? They're just a lot of people asking about. At the moment, no, I can't say anything specific uh, specific about any specific ship because uh, first thing to remember that we don't have a situation like we monitor ships A, B, and C, and like and only their balance. No, we work with all the ships in the same manner, and uh, this involves all the ships we have in game. So um, any changes to Siegfried or any other ship will be published in the dev blog. Okay, um, so let's move on and let's talk about rockets. So, um, as we already said in uh, the waterline video, we know it can be somewhat frustrating playing against CVs when you're a destroyer, um, because you know, like they they will come and they will take hit points off you, and we want to um, change that a little bit by changing the way that uh, CVs interact with uh, fast moving ships. So we've we we're, we're testing a, a change to the rocket mechanics where. Or you, you know what? I think the easiest thing is if I just show you, and well, we'll narrate it, and uh, this is going to be this is going to be slightly easier. Um, so, um, w under the current concept, when you initiate your attack, the planes will initially fire their machine guns. Right? They are not planned to do any damage to the ships themselves right now, um, and this is actually, as far as I've been told, like an actually historic uh, method for, for planes to aim their rockets uh, because they'd follow their tracer fire to kind of estimate, you know, like, where would my rockets go? Um, 
So this means it introduces an extra delay before the rockets are fired, uh, gives uh, destroyers a little bit more time uh, to react, and it also gives them a visual indicator of exactly where the rockets are going to land. So it makes it a lot easier for, for um, destroyers to um, actually just dodge. Um, not only the uh, I believe not only the delay itself, the delay itself could be introduced even without uh, the visual representation. But the most important factor here is uh, is like the actual spots where rockets will land. And even if you can dodge all the uh, rockets, however, you still see that rockets are distributed in a specific pattern, and you can uh, somewhat adjust the amount of uh, damage you may receive if you are not able to dodge the airstrike completely. And also, I've seen this question like a couple of times on different platforms. Uh, does the ship see those uh, machine guns firing? Yes, uh, this is the whole idea behind it, that uh, the ship, the surface ship, sees wo uh, where the rockets will land. Yeah. Um, head of credit cards is asking, would you consider adding a similar delay to other CV attacks? Uh, not planned at the moment. Uh, the idea here is that... Um, Rockets are very special in this regard. They are very effective against destroyers and other and other pretty maneuverable ships. We've had, for example, a long story of changes to the HQ bombs, uh, even a couple of years ago uh, during 08 versions, and we've made some changes to that to make it uh, more difficult to land and to, to strike a destroyer with HQ bomb because uh, they deal quite a lot of damage to such a low HP targets as destroyers. Um, but still we've made, uh, we've tried to keep the, their efficiency against bigger targets on the same level as before. Okay. Um, Albert already said machine guns will not deal damage. And if you think about it, right, even the not very armored uh, destroyer um, still has armor and a machine gun is not going to penetrate that. It will absolutely screw up uh, anybody who's on deck, but uh, it wouldn't actually damage the, the ship as such. So at the moment, they're not doing damage. Yeah, and uh, to Garus, just to clarify, because he has the question whether there's going to be basically a bigger delay between the time the CV player uh, pushes the button for firing the rockets and the rockets landing um, at the target then right now. And yes, exactly this is happening because you now have to, you know, have this part with the machine guns in between, which means there's going to be a longer delay between the rockets uh, being, you know, shot and actually landing. So it should give you a significantly more time than you have right now to um, evade that attack and make it easier to also estimate where these rockets are going to land. So overall, you should uh, take significantly less damage yes. as a destroyer, if you're paying attention, of course. Question from Mephisto. Will the machine guns trigger, um, trigger some kind of hit ribbon, though? Uh, for, for, for hit and MG, no. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cote is asking, will there ever be crewman models or servicemen on board the ship? It's unlikely. Um, I can say that from my side. It's First of all, it would obviously change the kind of dynamic and age rating of the game a lot if you have people on board, especially since naval warfare is truly horrific and people tend to just get absolutely ripped to shreds and that's not something we really want to represent in game, right? We're about the engineering, about the ships and about the sinking of the ships. Um, but we don't want to talk to turn this into like a like a military simulator. So most likely not. In port, uh, we already have some here and there, uh, but don't expect them to come into into battles. And uh, Weird74 says, well, since so many want uh, CVs nerfed even more than mine, just remove them altogether enough with the nerfing. Look, what we're trying to find is a good balance. I mean, there are players who like playing CVs. There are players who don't like playing against CVs. And we're trying to find the best possible balance where you can actually, you know, have fun in the CV, but also you have countermeasures to be able to deal with CVs and how they attack you. So that it is kind of like skill-based, that it's really about, hey, if you know what you're doing, you're going to be able to deal more damage. And if you know how to play against it, you have some chance to mitigate that damage. Um, it's not about like completely removing the chance to deal damage because that's also not the case with other classes, but to have like a good interaction overall between all of these different classes um, in the same match. Okay, and Young Jäger says, uh, what category do I send a ticket about claiming Twitch containers, missions that are failing to appear after claiming? Um, or you can probably go for... Uh, hmm. Mr. Combo, you're a better expert than me when it comes to customer support. 
What category? I believe there is a I don't have an item I should have category. But it doesn't it doesn't matter too much. If you just go um, and send a ticket, it'll be categorized once um, it reaches yeah. us anyway. And Board Dalek says still too many battles with two CDs in the game. One is really enough in any game. So what we had, what, that's something we are trying to address. We um, built in special rules for the matchmaker to reduce the amount of games where you have two CDs and only after a certain amount of time when we basically have too many CDs in the queue and we need to find matches for them, they will be added in a double CD match. But it's uh, rarely the case, especially on higher higher tiers. Yes. Uh, Tuck8185 is asking, any news on channel points? Well, Tuck, um, we don't know how we're going to let you spend them yet. However, if you would like to take your channel points that you currently have and turn them into more channel points, um, I'm all for uh, letting, because well, because I, I, I really want to use the prediction feature on Twitch um, um, over for COTS this weekend. So what you could do is you could wager your channel points um, on one of the two teams winning, and then you might actually get more channel points or have none. Uh, so if you, you want to do some gambling with something that's worth absolutely nothing, um, please please join us tomorrow. And also, if you, like, uh, not tomorrow, on Saturday. Um, in general, I think you should join us. It's going to be, I think, good fun. Yeah, of course we have questions about the Kitakami. We don't have news on that ship, and um, I wouldn't expect any news on that ship in the foreseeable future. Um, please don't test new classes in competitive modes. This is Siege Jordan. We, look, we we understand um, putting them in ranked battles um, is is going to be challenging, right? Because you, you're going to play uh, ranked battles and you have to deal with a new class. But that's the case. Um, for for any new class that we're going to be adding, right? And um, would you like to see them in random battles immediately? We don't think so. We want to have a PvP environment where we can test them. We already did have a special mode. And the next step for us after the next, uh, you know, a test session in general would be then to move them to ranked battles, which is a limited format for a limited period of time where we can have a really good um, overview how players are interacting with that in very, very different settings compared to like just a... Uh, uh, a separate test session so it's going to be one season and then we'll, we'll make uh, further decisions yes uh, uh, there's a question. Oh, go ahead I have a question from the re uh, the real I Duckman news on co-op matchmaking problems please so um, if I understand correctly that and that's about the amount of battles which is uh, um, happening with two players on the players team uh, so uh, there will be some changes to that, uh, an improvement of this state, yes. So, in short, there is some bug involved, which will be fixed in one of the updates to come. Um, Brett Hat is asking, uh, he, he has a comment about long range Russian radar of Soviet ships combined with the high velocity rounds are the biggest problem for DDs. Any chance to diminish the Russian radar range? So, we are not planning to change that, but if you think about the way ra the, the radar works, is that Russian, Russian radar is actually a short duration radar, which is more like a, a burst. And most of the ships, if you take a look at, for example, Stalingrad or Petro Pavlovsk, will be able to get two salvos, probably in, um, for one radar duration, which means you will take some damage. And yes, they have um, very high velocity shells and obviously also a, a, a good accuracy, but they are not like a high rate of fire ship. And if you compare to, for example, let's say Des Moines, that has a significantly longer radar duration time and a significantly faster reload. Um, it's a matter of like, you know, positioning and, and, and how, to, how to play against it. And recently we, for example, uh, touched the, the starting route twice already um, with a nerf to the radar duration, which kind of cuts down the impact that the ship would have with its long range radar. Um, yes, so um, there was a question here. Why, sorry, sorry, why was the King of the Sea connection extended for a third? <clears throat> um, stop chatting, kid. Uh, get lost, that chat goes away. So why was the King of the Sea collection extended for a third tournament with no additional rewards for the players that had already completed the collection? Um, we're going to think about what to do for the next King of the Sea tournament, but the amount of players that actually managed to collect every one of the 16 collection elements that could have been uh, collected was very, very small. Um, but now with uh, the third iteration of the collection, that number is going to rise, so we'll, we'll, we'll think about something for you. Indeed, and it's, it's working as with any other... Um, collection that we have, right? If if you, for example, watch a lot or you play a lot, um, you will be able to get it complete, it, complete it faster, right? And get the reward faster. And we'll see what we can do in the future, but I hope that you're also watching King of the Sea because it is a really cool tournament. It shows you a lot of um, interesting battles. There's a lot to learn 
um, even for very good players, about positioning and how to how to play World of Warships on the, the highest possible level. Yes. Um, by the way, concerning Stalingrad, right? If you're a Stalingrad player, this is not the, the, the change to the radar duration shouldn't really affect your damage output at all. It only really affects your utility for the team, because you'll still be able to get the same amount of volleys fired as you did with uh, the radar duration before. But it uh, means your team will have uh, less time to, to shoot at the targets that you've highlighted. Um, yeah, we, we need to think about our destroyer lives as well, right? Just the hashtag destroyer lives matter. It's not just that. Um, in general, and should I correct me if I'm wrong here, but we, we usually try when we make balance changes, right, especially when ships are already live, um, we try to do it in very small incremental changes um, to see, you know, going in the right direction and not overdoing it. That's a change in approach I've actually had roughly two years ago. And then again, we also try to keep the, the ship's play style, the idea behind the ship, the same so that we're not suddenly completely changing how the ship is going to be played. So for Stalingrad, it's still a great, um, you know, large cruiser, super, super tanky, amazing guns, has a short rated duration. It's not going to have um, suddenly like an impact that the Stalingrad is now a very bad ship. No, not at all. It's slightly um, better balanced in that regard. And we hope that, you know, we can 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 address the, the issue that uh, Stalingrad had by being slightly too strong um, with that Yep. Uh, there's a follow-up here from Forgotten Void. He says, if the collection is done away with, will those who have not completed it have another way to complete the collection? So I'm not suggesting we're going to do away with the collection um, because I would like you to collect it, right? But then there are other people who have already finished collecting it and we kind of have to think about those two. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how we can do this. Um, but uh, either way, we'll, we'll find a solution to make sure that uh, people can have fun with the collection. Going Toxic Commanders asking, I need two flanks on Italian ships. When will that be possible? So now that we got it out of the way for German ships, <laughs> of course, the question has to appear for our Italian ships. Look, um, we, uh, sooner or later, you will be able to do this, hopefully, with one of the upcoming, you know, uh, hopefully upcoming tech trees for the Italian um, lines. It's 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 a matter of time, uh, As it just as it was for the German line, right? It's something that we started doing um, in like not with the beginning of the game, but rather the middle of the game, right? And we'll try to also offer this to upcoming lines. But yeah, give us a little bit of time to do that. Okay. Um, should we? Should we actually? Should we maybe play one game of World of Warships before we go? Sure, we could. Sean, are you okay with that? Yes, totally. Should I yes. join you? Uh, if if you like. Absolutely. Well, or it's, you would, or, it's a free, or you would it's a grab someone from the chat. Yeah. Captain, no, no, no. I, I, I don't we don't get to play this. with you often enough. Unfortunately, and wannabe totally potato is asking super battleship stance and images. Um, you, we, we showed maybe Mr. Conway can play the video uh, uh, while we, Mr. While we launch can. the game and division up um, about can. the super battleships that we talked about at the very beginning of the stream. Uh, right now, we don't have any detailed stats. They will follow later on on the devlog, not in the very near future, but closer to the release of the special event mode for this. So just stay tuned. In general, all of the information that we usually talk about, um, you will find all of this on the dev blog as a teaser and also in, in usually with quite a bit of detail. And then we use these streams to kind of give you additional context uh, to be able to answer your questions wherever possible. And I hope you also liked it that we take the time to, you know, kind of address as many questions as possible where we can answer them. But by, by the way, uh, something for you to pass on to the uh, UI and UX team. Um, from Canosa's suggestion, could you please make it possible to buy signals by right-clicking them in port so we don't have to go to the armory? This is something that maybe could be passed to the UI team as a part of uh, some changes to the interface of the exterior stuff we kind of, they're thinking about, yes. Yeah, I think it, it makes a lot of sense to, to have, you know, like reduce the amount of navigating somebody has to do. Okay, cool. Um, are you guys in game? Uh, I'm Am looking, I the only looking, one who's prepared looking, here? In right now. Unbelievable. Well, I'm I'm focusing on chat. So <laughs> that's, my, I, I, that's my excuse. I, a great I, excuse, chat. I hope you will defend me. I focused on chat as well, but the game was already on the whole time as wow. a preparation for this. It's okay. It's fine. We didn't know we were going to play okay. after all. Muriak um, is asking, with the underwater component of most existing maps complete, will resources be used to create new maps? Um, in the future, sure, we'll, we'll work on new maps. Like We have we have a team of, of, of people who work on maps, right? They're always going to be working on maps. So once... Yes. 
Okay. Can we sell coal ships? No. I mean, you can. Don't you get one credit? Or I don't, you can't I don't, sell no, I don't all. think you can sell special ships. Uh, yeah, also, we don't, just that. don't. You used to be able to get one credit for them, and then uh, I, I know this because uh, people then complained about, oh my god, I accidentally sold my ship and I only got one credit. Can you implement a reminder system for having no camo fitted for when they ran out, etc.? So, Chris Burnett, uh, this is not planned right now. Um, I just, this is just me saying, like, don't be a potato. I know it sometimes happens, but um, I, I, I feel your pain. It sometimes happens, but just take a uh, look, look at your ship before you go in there, um, just to make sure you have a camouflage mount and also the correct one. But now we have so many camouflages in the game; it's always worth taking a look at which one you want to take into the game. But uh, you know, we can we have to pr provide this to, for example, Shola as a quality of life potential improvement. Uh, let me know. Let me know when I'm when I'm not mounting everything I should. Yes. What would you like to play, Shonai? As our guest, you get to choose. Um, uh, I'm perfectly fine with any two you would suggest. That's fantastic. Um, Shonai, as our guest, you are required to choose. Uh, <laughs> that's quite a difficult one. Okay, I have only two two. Tier 7 and Tier 10 ready on this account. Okay. And for some bizarre, bizarre reason, I can join your division now. Me neither. I just get like a... a... Ah. Okay. Permanent, permanent joining your division. Let me leave the division. Yeah. Okay. And there was a question <laughs> There was a question here um, about... Um, like a BB Incesticide says, maybe not allow people to queue in rank battles without camo. Look, at the impact of not having a camo is very minor. It's actually more about your your benefits that you get in terms of uh, economical benefits in the game, right? Uh, by mounting a camo, the 3% uh, <laughs> bonus is not going to make the most significant impact. Of course, it's better to have it, right? But overall, the impact in terms of like how decent a player is going to play is not going to be the biggest um, some players just also prefer to not play with any camo on because they like to have it more historical um terry cox is asking i'm on the verge of blowing my free xp to get the vampire 2 can you think of a reason why i should hang on to it no get it no. it's amazing do it now look if you i'm gonna play you, it like unless you haven't played any dd before um then probably i would say like check out maybe the daring which is a very close like gameplay style uh, dd uh, for that but otherwise, Vampire 2 is an amazing DD, and especially if you know what it's good at, you know, then you will have your fun with it. So, how about a good old, good old Tier 7? What do you think? Ah, okay. No, no Vampire 2 then. Oh. Okay, let's play Tier 7. It's fine. Yes, yes. I'm okay with this. Isn't Vampire 2 Research Bureau? Yes, but I mean, if you have free XP, you can you know, get used it as a shortcut there. Is there a limit to the number of super battleships in a single game? Is Mental Corn asking Shonai? Yes, it will be limited, so most probably something around three. Two, three, maybe two. We will see. Dep actually, actually, depends on the amount of uh, battleships, uh, of super battleships, which will be there available, and um, this is something that will be subject to be balanced. Karamba has a very good question. He's asking whether we need to sort out our dinner options tonight. No, tonight is not a we have dinner together um, date. So what? We did that. We did it on Friday because restaurants are not open in Prague at the moment. You can only do takeaway. Mm. Yes. Yes, uh, it is a takeaway evening. I'm afraid. By the time I get home, it's going to be late anyway. Okay, I'm going to take the Buiska Buitza. Oh, okay. tier seven. Perfect. Yes. Give me a second. Um, so you both take destroyers, yeah? Da, 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 Will the USS Black be available for coal in the armory? Um, Egg Alves, I am honestly not sure. There is a chance. We did say that she could come back um, after no more than six months, but we haven't put her back for a reason. We're a little bit afraid she, she might uh, become very popular, but I, I'm not sure. Uh, Shona, any comment? Black? Uh, Somebody asked here. Somebody asked, will, will, the, will, will, will the black be part of auctions, maybe? You don't know. We don't know. Uh, we'll see. I mean, not, not to add to what you said, yes. Okay, we're ready okay, to go. We're ready. Let's go. One. Let's do this. 
And Howling Wolf currently not planned to add another hull option for the HFCS Hider, um, but never say never. Where's Captain Schwirsky? Schwirsky should be available at some point um, in the not too far future as well. Yeah. I am very much, very much waiting for it as well because I missed the mission by like two battles because I snoozed. Um, and uh, I didn't and get you did And you didn't get uh, Gregor Brzezinski-Kiewicz either? <laughs> Well, I, I, I got him, yes, but he's not, you know, like he's not the same kind of special. Caspian, <laughs> Caspian, Caspian Corvado is asking um, whether like, he, he thinks we really need a commander's room or something where we can dismiss a recruited commander for a nation if you don't have a ship from that nation, which is uh, frustrating. We are aware of that, and I hope it's going to be one of the future improvements um, for the commander system in general. Yes, um, uh, we're turning into the voice from the off now because I, I think well, we need to like yeah, have the, the game big. Okay, tier nine game. Ooh, it's an Öster Jutland. I should pay attention not to meet him. Um, we have a question here from W L A Calon, who's asking: Have you ever considered adding a camel that would turn a tech three ship into a premium ship for a similar to Bloom cost to a premium ship? So would have the premium credit bonus ability for captains to be used as needed. Um, I mean, we, we have a kind of similar system by having permanent camouflages, which kind of gives you a similar bonus, right? Um, permanently applied to the ship. But um, actually being able to turn a ship into a premium ship and then using it for, for example, commander returning and being able to add a camo on top of that um, is at least currently not planned. I mean, Sean, do you have maybe an additional comment um, on that? No, no, okay. nothing. <laughs> also nothing to it here. Um, somebody said that Wargaming officially promised uh, USS Blackwood to be available for coal. And I'm very ha sorry to have to nitpick here, but we did not, in fact, do that. What we said is that we would remove it for sale from steel, and we may add it back for coal not any earlier than six months after its removal. Which Oops. we did with the other two ships. Will there be on tier CV, uh, Admiral Baskar? So the we, we would like to reintroduce them. The question is how to reintroduce them. And currently we're thinking about doing this potentially as of kind of like support CV. Um, but this is just like a, a rough idea at this point. We don't have any details yet. So this is something where I wouldn't expect any any news on this um, in the foreseeable future. So simply to... Okay, so we have support. either Jervis or Mahan here. By the way, we're with too many people here on this flank, in my personal opinion. Yes. Well, if you could uh, bully that Baltimore away, maybe I can take the fight with that uh, whoever's in the cap here. I was kind of hoping with all these battleships we could uh, dislodge him. This is out of radar range. Okay, I'm going to go for it. Ah, there we go. It's the Jervis. Slowing down. Okay, shots are out. I'm gonna see if you'd like to get talked. I'm not sure if there's any point. I do play the shotgun. Oh, the Mahan is perma spotted, by the way, by the Lepanto pushing him. If you do have shots. Not anymore. Oh, no, he's not spotted anymore. Okay, I I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna Oh the Jervis has left the camp. Okay, I won't go then. I'll see if I can suss out where what that Mah Mahan is doing. Oh, can we take out the Baltimore? There's the Jervis by the way. And there's the Mahan. The Mahan looks AFK, by the way. I mean, he's not moving and he's beached. Oh, well, let's make sure he's not coming back. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting him. Nice, he good job. Gone. Okay, we go on to concealment, take this cap. How's it looking over there, Chrysanthos? Uh, all good. We just took out the Mahan. 
um, which was my focus. And now we're going to deal with these battleships. Oh, the Lepanto was <laughs> ramming the Nelson. Interesting. Not the best Jarvis? we could have. Mm -hmm. The Jarvis is coming back. Oh, he's, he's fleeing. I would really love to take out the Baltimore. It's going into a better position. I believe if we, if we take on Jarvis and find out the, where the Pomeran is, we can somewhat put, put them. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that hurt really, really, really much. Nice shot there, but we the have the cap finally. Oh, there's the Pomeran. Um, Everybody's the turning away from me. I wish I had a bit more torpedo range. Careful, it's uh, single Can launch we... tops through the middle there. Mm. Well, this flank looks pretty secure. Other flank, I guess. Well, I not to... so well. No, 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 but we'll I just have to fall also a bit, a bit into concealment. Can we take out the Baltimore? Shona, I'll let you push up a bit. Oh, but you're so quiet. Are you alone? I'm okay. I'm just I'm, I'm I'm sitting here just just smoked up and just farming some fires on the battleships. You know, easy peasy. Just just nothing mm -hmm. nothing nothing critical. Yeah, I need to. Can you? Good. Can I? No, no, all good. Can I what? It's all good. You switch perspective. I did. You know, you have a stream deck right in front of you with buttons, right? Yes. Maybe you should think about pushing them. I mean, like you are a very inexperienced streamer, I understand. I have the job is coming back. Yes, I see. Oh, he has hydroed me as well. Time for you to die, Mr. Jarvis. Oh. Someone kill him! I took a lot more damage there than I wanted. I'm I'm probably toast. No. His smoke screen also just dissipated. Why like this? Come on, go dark. Damn it, I'm dead. No, Conway. Okay, can we get the Balti? I won't be able to survive this for very long. Not against these secondaries. Like 3k? Let's see. All we need. All the HP we need. <laughs> need it. We're also there. Report. Now, 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 all we can do is um, watch Shonai. <laughs> no, let's, let, let's see. How, 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 how's he doing? Where, how is he doing? Let's, let's find Shonai. Well, it's of course clear. If our destroyer stays at the back, then what are we going to do? Although this it's is an battle what? versus a Pomon, Carachulo, um, and uh, North Carolina, it's a bit rough. Are you shooting HE? Yes. You per uh, 07 is asking yes. if you. I'm, I'm shooting HE. So, Burning. you per, you per one, uh, 107 is asking if you end up with leftover duplicates when you complete the King of the Sea collection, do you keep them to start the next collection or do you lose them? No, with any other collection, um, you get compensation and credit points for your duplicates. Um, there's also a question from Legion here. Can we have more permanent camels for purchase for premium ships? Um, I'm sure we'll be adding more in the future, uh, but it's not like we have now like a huge stack of uh, permanent camouflages coming as a big set into the game anytime soon. 
And Tushan says, Mr. Kombi would have survived longer if he had gone pink at the start of the battle with Chrysanthus. Uh, potentially, we will hopefully never find out. Yes. And uh, good evening, Rita, by the way. She says, good afternoon, handsome people. She must not mean us. <laughs> and Captain Minya, as I've said before, no update on this at the moment. Sorry. Oh, the TC Freer. The very famous TC Freer is here. I'm sure you all know. There's no need to introduce him. Yes, and also um, we, we released today uh, special a new contributor article, yes. Hmm? Huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Feel free to talk about it. You can talk about it. You started. I just. It's, I, just the way I was just going to make jokes about he's so famous he's even on her portal, but it's, it's fine. Okay, so Cordway. I'll, 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 I'll leave it to Cordway then. No, we have a, a community contributor spotlight article where we highlighted a few of our awesome community contributors. TC Freer, um, who, who you must already know, um, is among them. It's more us um, like feeding off his uh, famousness to, to drive uh, viewers to our portal rather than the other way around, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, also, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, for example, uh, our contributor Flumbers released a really, really interesting video on his YouTube channel, which you can find a link to um, in that application as well. So I would recommend you to check it out. It's a nice, nice historical video. Sangluna saying, how do I contact Wargaming about historical inaccuracies? So you could, for example, post about this on the forums, tag one of the staff members, and then we'll be happy to pass it along to the correct department internally, and they can take a look at it. Uh, but you just have to be aware of the fact that while we try to keep things, you know, um, close to reality in terms of, like, you know, the signs of ships, we use blueprints, for example, as bases, sometimes we have to make changes for simple gameplay reasons. Um, because at the end of the day, this is a game, it's supposed to be fun. Um, the things need to be balanced, and while historical accuracy is great and something we strive for in certain aspects, it's not the ultimate factor yeah. in the game. So, so Toby Jug, um, I, I, I see the quote that you're throwing at me there, but at the end of your quote, it says, or later. This is or later. I'm, I'm sorry to say, like, it, it is what it is. Um, okay, and then I think... Ladies and gentlemen, that slowly brings our special Q&A stream for the Waterline episode to its conclusion. Yes. HMS King George uh, the Fifth is asking, I just got here. What news did I miss? So the best thing for you to do is if you missed that entire stream is to, first of all, watch the new Waterline episode that we just released yesterday, which is covering most of the topics that you might be seeing in World of Warships within the next, let's say, three to six months, right? And then most of the questions that you probably might have about these news that we are able to answer at this point are covered in today's stream, which you can also just watch as the VOD either on Twitch or on YouTube. So I hope that answers your question. Um, overall, I hope we were able to give all of you a little bit of additional insights on the news we shared yesterday. Um, sorry if some things uh, we were not able to answer because it's simply too early to talk about it. But of course, we will give you more information in any of our future streams as soon as we're ready to talk about it. So um, just come back. You know, we'll do our very best to answer as much as we can. Yes. And uh, somebody was just saying they, they boys can't get wait to get out of here. Actually, I always have a lot of fun in the streams. So does Chrysanthemum. However, um, King of the Sea is happening this weekend and next weekend. So if you are um, looking to see more of us and hear more of us over the next uh, weeks, there'll be ample opportunity because we are indeed going to be live here on this very channel this Saturday from uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon Central European time. That's 1500 UTC EST or 1300 UTC. You can find it on the portal if you're not sure what that means. Um, and we're going to be live all the way into the evening. And we're going to do the same thing again on Sunday. Uh, then the weekend after, we're going to have King of the Sea International, where we're going to do this again on Saturday and Sunday. And then the Tuesday after that, there's a special stream, which you will soon find out about what it's about, uh, where we're going to do this for even longer, uh, from all the way in the morning to uh, the next morning. So... So we'll look, we'll, look we'll be here. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you like two more minutes because some people say, no, it's not two hours yet. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be here for another two minutes. Don't worry about it. Rita Mal has a very good question. And Painter has the same question. And I think, Mr. Conway, maybe you can talk a bit about for these guys who have no idea what is King of the Sea. Why so, are they not Kings of the Seas? So King of the Sea, right? Because King of the Sea is a team game, which means you join it as a team. It's, oh, is it, it's a separate game? Is it new? Is it from Morgan? I, I will throw things at your face. Like uh, there's a, like a like a controller. <laughs> I would here, I would like I to try this. Is it also with warships? So um, it is King of the Sea because the team becomes the King of the Sea, right? It's a team effort. 
and uh, they don't become the kings of the sea as individuals. They become the king of the sea as 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 a whole. Okay. Is, is, but the risky. That's, look, which, which I decided it was going to be this way, so it's is it's this what the way it is. Is it a global sea, or will we see that? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> it's it's just it's just a, maybe we should have king of the ocean for for like uh, king of the seven seas for international. We'll we'll have to think about that. Um, Penzel says, "Can I be a queen of the sea instead?" We don't judge. You can be whatever you like. Um, you can be the unicorn. Yes, Jack of the Ocean. Okay, if you want. Um, so yeah, so King of the Sea is um, like the, the biggest World of Warships competitive event. Um, it's uh, like a, a, a event that started from small grassroots uh, with a couple of people in Europe doing it. And now everybody around the world can participate in it. It's an international tournament. Um, this weekend is going to see the conclusion of the regional stages on Europe and North America and Asia. Um, in Russia, the uh, regional finals were actually already played last weekend because they have a big public holiday coming up the weekend and uh, they want to spend the time outside. Um, so yeah, so this weekend we're going to find out who the best teams of the other three regions are. And then on the weekend after that, uh, the best three teams from each region are going to come together in one more little knockout tournament uh, where they will be playing uh, for uh, a prize pool of 30,000 US dollars, um, as well as the bragging rights of being the best players of all of warships in the world. It's going to be a lot of fun, hopefully. Um, we're going to be live yeah, here from uh, the afternoon. Um, if you are ever curious as to the schedule, you can go to wo.ws slash schedule to see the schedule. It's quite simple. Remember it. Yes. Um, otherwise, there's a King of the Sea article on our website as well. And of course, um, related question. If you want to have more King of the Sea containers, of course, during the King of the Sea broadcast, you will be able to get your yes. hands on additional missions to get more King of the Sea containers yes. and complete your collection. Yes, there will be a, a, a Twitch drop every day, uh, a separate one. So there are four more drops to claim for this King of the Sea tournament series. And each day you can get a mission, which if you play it, and they are quite easy missions, will give you a King of the Sea collection container. Why do you care about King of the Sea collection containers? I shall show you, because I think that's probably the best best way to, to, to we, we, can, we can just show you. I actually haven't finished mine yet, uh, because whenever there was King of the Sea on, some re for some reason I was really busy. And well, what happened? I, I I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's it's just one of those things, right? They just you just. It, it is what it is. Anyway, so if you never get to the collections, um, you'll find there is a King of the Sea collection. Now, this King of the Sea collection um, has like some fun references to the origin of King of the Sea. Um, um, I really like the art style and the art team did, did a good job there, catching kind of the spirit of it. Um, and this is going to be Chrysanthus on the weekend. I don't know if this is actually a reference to the picture of me with the three microphones, but it might be. I'm not sure. Um, why you should care about this collection is the final reward, which is a premium ship tier 7 container, which means once you complete the collection, you get a free random tier 7 premium ship. It's a pretty good deal. Um, yeah, so come watch King of the Sea. Uh, there are a total of 16 to collect. You can get four more this time and then, you know, more next King of the Sea tournament. Exactly. Um, one thing one thing to highlight, um, besides King of the Sea this weekend, uh, there will also be a marathon for the Kirov. If you don't have her yet, you can get Kirov with a special camouflage. You can find the information on the portal we just released today. It's going to start tomorrow, so tomorrow you will have the combat mission chain for that. You will get a Soviet permanent camouflage and a commander with three skill points. If you already have the ship, then you will get compensation and credits, but you will still get the permanent camouflage, of course, and the commander on top of it. Plus, you get the chance to earn additional victory salute camouflage, as there's a lot of uh, bony. Evan, I, I've seen you in chat, so I'll just say bony. And it discounts in the game. We get, uh, of course, 50% uh, off for tier 2 to tier 5 of Soviet, American, British, and French ships, 30% for tier 6, tier 7, and 15% of tier 8 to tier 10 ships, plus a 50% discount in credits for the cost of upgrades. And there's an additional uh, bonus for the conversion rate of Elite Command XP and a Ship XP uh, to free XP. So if yes. you want to, you know, get some additional free XP, this is a great time to convert if you have some doubloons lying around. And the Victory Day permanent camouflages for the uh, fitting ships are going to be discounted as well. So I hope this is nice. 
And if all of this is completely uninteresting to you and you just want to grind, there's a 200% XP bonus for the first win of the day throughout the entire weekend. So um, go play World of Warships, have some fun with it. Um, I think that's it from my side. Uh, Sean, I, I'm sure you have some Can, last words. Uh, Conway. Conway has a comment, of course. Just, just one, one or two more questions because the people were asking. Um, so first of all, um, the containers, or the, the missions for the containers from King of the Sea this weekend are available to all players worldwide. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Um, and it, basically the drop starts when the um, Asian tournament st uh, starts and when the American tournament finish. So it's almost a 24-hour period. So if you watch 90 minutes of any of the streamers broadcasting King of the Sea for any of the regions, um, you will get the drop. Uh, you can find a list of your regional streamers on your portal. Um, and somebody else was asking, will COTS containers be available without Twitch? Um, there is a bonus code for players uh, in, in, in Asia and Russia that you'll see floating around for the streamers um, on the other regions. Almost all of our streamers are exclusively on Twitch. Uh, so just come and get them through drops. It's easier. Okay. And with that, I'm done. And I'm going to say goodbye and hand over to Shonai for the final words. Um, you, you've caught me off guard. So, as always, I, I was very pleased to be here with you and with that pleasant chat and all the players from all over the world. And I hope that sooner or later I will join you here again to discuss some different nice things, how to play together, some interesting gameplay modes. So, thank you very much, and uh, I hope that we will hear each other soon. Yes. Um, actually, that can't be the final, final word. Uh, Chrysandas, we need to pick someone to raid. Cool. Well, Mr. Conway is finding somebody to raid. I will just say thank you very much for joining in, guys. I hope you had a good stream. We will be back on Saturday and Sunday with King of the Sea. Otherwise, um, of course, don't miss out on our North American stream tomorrow evening if you would like to see, for example, have a photo play. So um, they will be very happy to have you there on board and also answer additional questions. I'm sure you have still plenty of them. And yes, on Sunday, there's Mother's Day. So don't be that guy. Don't be that son. Don't forget it. At least here in Europe and in North America. I think it's the, pretty much the same the me, same date around the world. Giving me a guilty conscience. Yes. Yes. Sharing it. Sharing it. Just you're taking care of your, of your mothers. Oh, that sounds so wrong. I should not have said this. Um, be, a, be a good son or daughter. Whatever. You know. You get to pick. Um, yeah. And with this, I'll just say goodbye um, with this nice cat down there. Oh, you, you, should, you should make sure I pick it now that he's uh, what's, fully zoomed in. What's the cat's name? Uh, her name is Jana. Jana. Okay, well, goodbye, Jana. Um, goodbye, chat. Thank you very much for tuning in today. And we'll see you on Saturday for King of the Sea 12. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.